I think growing up in Lake Macquarie, Spears Point and Bullaroo, it was like a kid's playground that, you know, there was no holds barred. I had an older sister and she passed away with cancer when she was 40, Charmaine. And uh, I've got a younger sister, Faye, and uh, she's a beautiful thing. She was um, a female version of me in a lot of ways. Uh, they called her that Dorothy Dix, but I could tell her anything and she'd have an answer for it and it was always right. She had a very good psyche, I suppose. I had this dream to be the greatest soccer player in the world and I failed miserably, but I ended up playing for Liverpool. I ended up being the worst player in the world's best team, but that's because I, I achieved the best that I could possibly be. The breakthrough to Middlesbrough first teamer and, and being on the first team at 17 and a half years old, then being bought by Liverpool, it was a big, big pinnacle moment. As I've said, Often, you know, I could have died on the spot, a happy man, because the dream was there and uh, now the dream was realised. And it was only two years after that, uh, again, another cup final, uh, where, where Faye's injury had happened, uh, and then my career was over. I was actually um, getting ready to go to the Christmas party at the club. The phone rang and it was mum uh, and dad on the phone and said, your sister's had a dreadful accident. And I'm like, what? Three o'clock in the morning, I received a phone call. Faye has been uh, gassed. She was having a shower and the hotel they were in hadn't properly ducted the gas. And the gas, which was the butane gas with no smell, it had come into the bathroom and she had been there for an hour imbibing this butane gas. So uh, I dropped everything and uh, I got on a plane, I think went to Paris and then got a, um, an air ambulance from Paris to fly to Tangier and, uh, and she was in a coma. Uh, I was there to, to get her out and brought her back to London, um, which is what I had to do. She was in a coma for about three weeks and we went every day to her, try and arouse her from the coma. But it was on New Year's Eve in 1986, I think, when she woke up and smiled. But she wasn't the Faye that we knew, no knowledge of any of us. She didn't know who I was and I didn't know who she was. I didn't tell anybody because I knew uh, it would cause uh, problems for everybody, so nobody knew what was happening, uh, and I wanted to keep it that way. We all thought Faye would get better, and then eventually I arranged for everyone to go back to Australia, so time went on and we tried all sorts of things, and mum and dad took her to Malaysia, took her to Hocus Pocus doctors or, you know, uh, neurological expert. Nobody could help. Everyone tried to help. So I retired. Uh, I made a big, big decision. Uh, Faye's uh, accident being the driver of it, but also there was money issues. I just said, we're, you know, we're going home. Nobody knew anything. 1986, 87. One lady who's supposed to be an expert, she told me the only information she would give me, she could give me, was to put a pillow between her legs when she slept. Faye apparently wasn't getting any better and never would, is, is the biggest sadness of the lot. And mum calls it an eternal grieving. You know, when, when a child dies, you grieve and grieve and grieve, but then you get past the grieving. She said, I've got one that's dying every day. It's kind of like a, that puts it into perspective, you know, uh, and mum's still there every day, you know, tending to Faye and uh, the, the hero in all of this is, is mum and dad would uh, agree with that and uh, anybody that knows mum. And then one marvellous day into our life, 
became Sue. I'd had lots of people before who came there, ate my scones, drank my coffee, and they didn't know what to do. That's why I think Head Start was so important, is, is they understand brain damage and brain injury, and nobody else did. It's all about uh, understanding not just the problem, uh, neurologically but the effect on the family and that's why Head Start uh, was our only saviour you know and, and still is to this day. Brain injury is such a, a specialised and horrific thing. Every case is different so that there's, there's nothing you can say but your heart bleeds and you know if you say nothing you know, that's as good as saying anything. You've got to not do it on your own. Uh, you've, you've got to work with people that understand the 360 of brain injury and its impact on the family as well. We were hoping, 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 and uh, you know, poor, poor old Faye's never come right. I uh, was still hoping, still hoping. It's, it's, it's not advice, you can't give advice. You can just say, look, there's wonderful people out there, Head Start, that fully understand the, the pressure uh, and the hurt and the pain and the love that you all need to get through.